Hey, 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 we're back. We're black. We're extra black today. You just wait and see. We're oh. brown. <laughs> oh, you heard that voice? We're brown ambition. Hey, man, they heard that bass. They heard that baritone. <laughs> they said, that's not Mandra. <laughs> Hey, uh, Tiffany. How are you? There's some testosterone in the show today. I what know. are we going to do? I know. What are we do? So excited, y'all. Today we have a very, very special guest. We have been trying to have this gentleman on the show for a minute now, but COVID had other plans for me, for everyone else. But we are so, so excited to welcome Drew McCaskill to Brown Ambition. So let me tell you a little bit about Drew before we get into, you know, let him, let bless him with, bless you with his velvety voice. Um, <laughs> but Drew, and why everyone should know about Drew is he's a LinkedIn career expert and culture mm -hmm. analyst, um, an inclusion champion, a marketing executive at LinkedIn. Of course, he's a career expert and communications executive. But before LinkedIn, I mean, Drew's career just spans, runs the gamut. He most recently was leading DNI diversity and inclusion strategy for the global sales, marketing, and public affairs function at Facebook, might have heard of it, okay. <laughs> and U.S. Consumer Marketing and Global Communications at Nielsen, where he also led communications for Nielsen China, and he was named one of PR Week's top 40, under 40 mm -hmm. PR executives and co-authored, y'all, co-authored the award-winning Diverse Intelligence series on the economic and cultural impact of multicultural consumers. So, Without further ado, welcome to the show, Drew. Yeah. Hey, thank you all for having me. This is amazing. I, I, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have been on a show, show many times. You guys might have heard of it, the Karen Hunter Show. Karen is our girl. And so Drew and I yes. have been guests many times. And often, sometimes we'll be on at the same damn time. Um, at the so. same damn time. And I love every minute of it. Look, not only were we on at the same time, but my nieces both got your book. Oh, really? That's awesome. <laughs> I was like, I was like, my, I was like, y'all, we got to all get our money right. And uh, <laughs> this is, this is, this is going to give us the the jump start we need. So That's I am, awesome. um, I am also a fan. So. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited. First and foremost, tell people what does a professional LinkedIn ex career expert do? Yes. What are you up to? A lot of there? what I do is sort of break down into in the layman's terms, like some of the things of how one to effectively use our platform, mm -hmm. um, as well as to talk a little bit about trends, things that are happening in the marketplace, like for job seekers that to help you understand. I mean, I lean in heavily to having conversations with people who look like me and, and kind of helping them decode some of the things that are happening in the in the economy and in the job market. That's sort of like what I've always done. Even at Sirius, I was culture and economics contributor at Sirius XM. My, uh, my strong opinion is that um, Women and people of color need to, all of us should have a LinkedIn um, plat profile. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't just say that because I work at the company. I thought that beforehand, but now I definitely realize that every 10 seconds, somebody gets a job on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of opportunity for information sharing. And I truly believe that the people perish for lack of information. And when the information is there and free and all you have to do is use the tool, I'm like, yo, that's us. Let's get on it. Because um, I think about Twitter, right? Like um, African-Americans in particular, let's talk about Black folks for a second, make up 14% of the U.S. population, but we make up about 28% of active conversations on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Imagine if we over-indexed on a technology tool and platform that was literally created to connect people to economic opportunity what that could look like. What if we over-indexed in a place where everybody is having conversations about economic opportunity, about getting the bag? That's a whole different way of using your time online. Mm -hmm. And part of what I do as a career expert is to... You know, I feel like sometimes having a a person who looks like you, who comes from your community, who's, who sounds like you, who talks like you, giving you that information... Mm -hmm. It will oftentimes make people say, oh, okay, I can trust this voice. I mean, I had, um, I feel like I've built some credibility uh, long before I came to LinkedIn. And I think, you know, the mission is good enough for me to leverage that credibility to help people understand the opportunity that's out there. 
Yeah, you talk about LinkedIn and listen, as a career coach myself, just today I had a client who, and I hear this all the time, I'm scared of LinkedIn. Like I, or it's not even I'm scared. They first they say they hate it. I hate yeah. LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't want to be on LinkedIn. My profile is old and dusty. I haven't updated it in years. And you know what's at the core of it is LinkedIn sometimes doesn't feel like it's for us. So you mentioned yeah. like Twitter, you know, 20, I didn't realize that stat, that's just, you know, black Twitter is so strong. We all know yeah, that, but absolutely. I didn't know there was the stat behind it. So thank you for that. But how can we make, what, what do you, what's your take on that? Why doesn't LinkedIn feel as free, you know, for us yeah, to, I, to join in on the conversation? That's such a fair question. Um, it's such a fair question. And I think that black folks, uh, particularly black women are thriving on LinkedIn, particularly mm -hmm. black women entrepreneurs are thriving on LinkedIn. Um, but I also think that we're doing uh, we're doing a little bit better job, I think, now in making sure that we have content that feels good and it feels like, oh, this is for me. Um, mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I came on board was largely to help the, us reintroduce LinkedIn to consumers who have felt like, oh, I don't think it's for me. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is. So I'm having conversations in our community about how to use the tool, how to make it less daunting, right? How to find information that is that's germane to you and your experience. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we did, like we just spent uh, all of February and March doing um, specific content around um, entrepreneur, black entrepreneurs, right? Black folks are black all 12 months, not just Shout February. <laughs> Shout out to that. <laughs> and so in the entire month of March, we highlighted and profiled black women entrepreneurs and them telling their stories and how they found, how they found community mm -hmm. as well as opportunity on the platform. And the more that you sort of have those conversations and amplify those conversations, the more when people come to the platform, they start to see content that looks familiar, right? But we also want it to be incredibly useful. Mm -hmm. And that's a journey. Um, and it's a journey that I'm I'm excited to be a part of the, the leadership on so that people do feel more, um, they do feel more connected to the platform. But we've got a lot of work to do in, in terms of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a lot of investment going into that, but it's also around, um, you know, I think sometimes career conversations can feel like medicine, mm. right? And, you know, if you've got, you know, a sugary snack over here and a little bit of medicine over here, mm. like that sugary, you know, Twitter snack. I was going to say. Be it may be easier Some to link Twitter into. convos, Drew, are not appropriate for LinkedIn. I know, exactly. That's what he's trying to say. Absolutely he's trying to say. They're not. He was like, you can't bring all that ratchet to LinkedIn. And sometimes you can't. You get jobs. You can't. Okay. We, so, we, have, we, have, we have controls for the chaos, right? Because it is still a professional platform. Yeah. And that's what the conversations are about. And I think that's actually a good thing. Can I ask a question, Drew? So, so I love that you said that Black women and entrepreneurs are thriving on LinkedIn. So if someone's listening, I would love if, can you give some best practices if you are a an entrepreneur, this is mm -hmm. the way you should lean in versus if you, you know, um, are, you know, have a career, you know, um, and you don't own your own business. This is the best practices, how you can lean in. Can you like kind of differentiate the best ways to lean in and those two sides? Yeah. So off top, there's a couple of things that everyone should just think through. It's like one, have a good, have a good profile picture, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on headshots, but, uh, you probably shouldn't have a beach selfie on your LinkedIn profile <laughs> unless you're a surf instructor. Right. And so I would say, have a great, have a great picture. So people know that you're a real person be really keen about what your superpower is and talk about your skills and your experience, right? And why, um, what people need to know about you as a professional. That's really, really important. Use keywords that are, that are really germane to the work that you do, right? And talk about your skills, 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 skills. That's how people find you is based on skills. Skills are the key to the algorithm. I will say, uh, in addition to that, if you're an entrepreneur, say what you're looking for and figure out who, what groups there are that you can join on the platform. There are lots of groups for entrepreneurs. If you're an entrepreneur in finance, join the finance groups. If you're an entrepreneur 
and you have a service or a, or a business, do all of those things. If you're um, if you're a professional looking for a traditional uh, job and you're actively looking for work, there are a couple of tools. One that I think is absolutely amazing, and it is called Job Alerts. Job Alerts allows you to look for a job while you're eating, sleeping, working at your current job mm-hmm. because you set up a profile of the types of jobs that you want, the geographies that you're looking at, companies that you would like to work for. And as soon as a job... Uh, posts on our platform, and there are millions of jobs that post on our platform globally every day, you get an alert in your email that says, hey, a job that matches your profile that you set up just opened up. Here's how you can now go and apply for it. And I would say, engage. Engage in terms of finding the people on the platform that are a part of your community and even people that you want to be a part of your community. Particularly if you're an entrepreneur, I think... LinkedIn is a great way for you to engage with your network, with people who are talking about and about the business that you also are about. And using the platform as a networking tool is incredibly important. It also, if you are if you are a person who's in that sort of phase of I'm I'm working. But I'm also an entrepreneur at the same time, as many of as many mm-hmm. folks are in mm-hmm. sit in both of those um, categories. Having um, having a service page in addition to your LinkedIn um, profile page that talks about this is my business, this is my other business that I do. I'm a freelance writer, or I, you know, I'm on the speaker circuit, and have that connected to your to your profile page as well. Mm. That says that that makes it easy for people to search for you if they're looking for somebody with your skill or somebody who does what you do, right? Also, if you're looking for, if you are a person who's looking for a job, LinkedIn has a feature called Open to Work. You can turn it on. People are so scared of that one, Drew. And so here's, I know people are typically scared because, you know, if I'm working at LinkedIn, I don't want LinkedIn recruiters to see that I'm open (laughs) to work, right? Yeah. But there's also, there's a control for that too, that recruiters from the job that you have listed won't necessarily see that you're open for work. But other recruiters will be able to see that. You can even if oh, you're really I didn't about realize it, it had a way of like filtering out recruiters from. It has a company. way of filtering that okay. out. I mean, we've heard that before. We've reacted to that, and we've and yeah, we've created a solution for that. And so that says to recruiters immediately. Listen, my mm. partner is in recruiting, and his entire team lives by LinkedIn. Right. Mm. They use it every single day. That's how they find candidates, particularly if you have one that you're open for work. You go to the top of the list for when recruiters are searching. Mm. I like I didn't know that there was like a like a service page. So because I am like looking at my LinkedIn now, I'm like, I mean, my picture is all right. It's the it's the cover of my book, which it will be for yeah. a while. Right. But um, right. I didn't know I could like link it to like, hey, I mean, people reach out like actually I'm looking at my LinkedIn profile and a company has just reached out because they want to talk about like um, partnership. So I was like, yeah. so I do check, I would say weekly, uh, give or take. Um, but I didn't know I could have a service page. Um, that's pretty cool. I'm definitely going to like look into it. Yeah, that. I mean, someone, someone that you, if you, hey, here's how you book me for speaking engagements, or here's the types of, I, I help and partner and do these things with, um, with, you know, internal um, employee resource groups or things like that, or I'm open to consulting. All of those things, you can do that on a on a profile page. And two, you can go to opportunity.linkedin.com and figure out better ways to do all of those things. Like okay. we know that this, that it can be a little daunting, but opportunity at linkedin.com also helps you look at, these are the top jobs that people are looking for right now. This is the way that you can write a really cool bio in that top part right there that uses the keywords to help people find you. Hey, BA fam, if you've been listening to our show lately, you know that more than ever, we have been candid about the importance of taking care of our mental health, especially in times like these. Now we are going to have a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. They're an incredible online talk therapy service. And honestly, why aren't we taking care of our minds better, you guys? I mean, how well would you take care of a car if you had to keep the same car your entire life? That's how our brains work. So honestly, we should be treating them that same way. Because how we care for our minds affects how we experience life. So as we're investing in our financial security and our professional resilience, let's also remember it's so important to invest time and care into keeping our brains and our minds healthy. 
Personally, I have been in therapy for years, and most recently, my husband and I started working with BetterHelp for couples therapy. Now, y'all, we've been married for five years, and I'm going to be honest, even we do not get it right all the time. So I'm so happy to partner with a service like BetterHelp that gives young couples like my partner and I an opportunity to work on our relationship, because honestly, it's a lie to think that we're meant to do these things alone. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. Y'all, even my husband and I have had moments where we haven't been able to be in the same room for therapy, but we were easily able to connect with our therapist through the app or even just a phone call in a pinch. And for those really emotional conversations, you better believe I could turn the camera off if I didn't want them to see me at that moment. More than that, it's even more affordable than in-person therapy, which means it's more accessible. Plus, you can get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Best of all, in my experience, is that if you don't like the therapist they first match you with, you can just pick a different one. Now for the exciting part. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash BrownAmbition. That's BetterHelp.com slash BrownAmbition. Can we pivot just a little bit and talk about... The, you know, there, we've come, we're coming off of this period where it has felt like a job seekers market, you know, the great yeah. resignation giving way to labor shortages, companies competing more than ever. There's something like two jobs for every open job seeker right now. That being said, there is obviously a little bit of like a cooling off in terms of um, the job market, just a cooling off. I don't want people to get like freaked out. I mean, the jobs report just came out Friday. It's still really strong. It's a little bit under what we what we saw in May, but still really strong. And unemployment is still so low. But you must be getting the same kind of questions I get from my coaching clients, which is, you know, do I need to change my, do I need to try to find a job quicker than I thought? Is it going to be really tough to find a job in six months? Um, so for job seekers who are maybe a little bit anxious about what's happening in the economy, what would you say to them about their hopes for finding a better opportunity. No pressure. <laughs> no, no pressure on that. Listen, I don't have a crystal ball, but I will say that you can read the tea leaves on what's happening in the economy right now, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, let's just let's just be real about it. Um, I think that there's going to be some contraction in the market, um, and that's you know that's my opinion, not as an economist, but as somebody who reads the paper every day. And I think for job seekers, one of the things that you have to do is get really clear about what it is that you want to do and why. Is it is this the right time for you to make that move? What are you looking for in a new opportunity? You also have to think, I've got to now really investigate these companies before I, before I leave the job where I am today and go work for somewhere new. And I've got to really get a good idea of what I'm getting myself into. I think what we saw a lot in the what we call the great reshuffle, others call the great resignation, is that there was some there was some resignation regret on a lot of folks, mm -hmm. a lot of people um, boomerang back to their old jobs if they were if those jobs were still available because they looked at that number and they looked at the prospect that they looked at around all of their friends were changing jobs and they thinking okay well the block is hot let me go out and get this additional bag mm -hmm. without thinking about the culture and so I, what I would say to job seekers is you've got to be really clear about what it is that you want from work why you want it and what your expectations are so that when if you do make that decide to make that move, you know the right questions to ask. And you need to be asking um, companies just as many questions as they're asking you in the interview process. Mm -hmm. Are there people in leadership who look like me? Mm. Um, you know, have I, you know, who do I know who works there? Right. Is there someone who works there who has a life experience similar to mine? Let me reach out to them and ask them and ask them about their experience working there. Like you have to investigate the uh, the companies that you're going to go work for just as much as they're thinking about you and Googling you and all of those things. Uh, so culture matters. The other thing I would say is it's still very much an employee marketplace. But I do think that folks have to will will see that contraction and so now it is making that decision do i am i looking for more flexibility am i looking for more money am i looking for a different um a different role altogether or in a different industry altogether how and is there an opportunity for me to to make those moves internally because a lot of what companies are are saying right now is my next employee may be my current employee just in a different role mm -hmm. inside of this organization a lot of people leave 
great companies because they got shitty managers, right? Mm. And so there may be an opportunity to think through how do I move on from this particular role and still stay with this company if there's opportunity in other places in that in that um in that world. You have not because you ask not. We have to get really, really confident in the fact that there's so many more things that are negotiable now than they've ever been before. Employees have more voice and more choice than they literally ever had before. There are more platforms for folks to be vocal about their work experience and their lived experience. And companies are being a lot more mindful of that now than they've ever been. And they're taking on um, and they're taking on a lot more empathy and care than they've had than they've done before because now they literally have to. I was going to ask, that's a like a good segue because I, I was going to ask if someone is an employee and kind of looking for a new place to work, what are some things to consider as it relates to what's happening right now from Rover, you know, Ro- Roe versus Wade to, um, you know, post racial re- reckoning. I, it's funny because I was on a, I was on a call with a financial brand, a huge financial brand, and we're working together. And I was like, can I ask something candidly? They were like, sure. I said, why do you care about black people all of a sudden? Everybody was like, Skrr. yeah. You know, I was on my Kanye because I was like, what you going to do? You going to find another budget needs for you? Nah, we going to ask these real questions. And plus it was a, yeah. like the leader on the call. She's a sister. So she looked at me like, oh, girl, yes, ask. I was like, so <laughs> I said, because right. I remember like not less than 10 years ago when I first came out and I was trying to book things and whatever, you know, I had to be careful to say women, you know, because I said black yeah. women, y'all ran off. And I said, because you're not the only financial brand. I mean, I'm beating financial brands off with a stick. I said, they just camped out, you know, in front of my, um, my, my budget needs to porch, you know, yeah. <laughs> they don't even care that I'm working with their, you know, with the whomever they're like, we'll, we'll go next. And I'm like, but why? And then of yeah. course it was like, um, the answer was something to the effect of like, oh, because of the racial reckoning, you know, we want to do better. I said, let's be real. What is the financial benefit for helping black and brown people? Because you're a company, you're not, I mean, you, you know, y'all been down bad. So like, like for real. And so if, you know, for folks who are like making decisions now about what company to work for, what are some things that they should be looking at as it relates to modern challenges that um that that companies have to have to account for? Yeah, I think that they I think that you're you're absolutely right. And I think that you, the question that you asked that organization is spot on, right? But and part of that is um black folks contribute one point one point four, one point five you know, trillion dollars to the U.S. economy every Mm -hmm. year, right? If black folks, just black folks were a global economy, we'd be the 15th largest GDP in the world. Mm. Between Spain and Mexico is black America, right? Mm. And so when you put that into context, that's companies are like, oh, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And black folks, particularly led by black women, are demanding more of the people that we spend our money with. Mm -hmm. That's just point blank, period, right? I think that there, that, companies are reckoning with the fact that there's an empathy gap out there. Mm -hmm. People are disillusioned with church. They're disillusioned with government. They've been disappointed with all of these organizations and entities that have had such huge impacts on their lives. And they're thinking that the one place where I have some modicum of influence is now work. And Companies are having to get religion around the fact that people are expecting them, employees and consumers are expecting them to have some sort of, um, you know, moral impact, right? To be moral actors. And that's so new for most companies. And you're now seeing companies like figuring it out, right? Like you see a lot of companies that are saying, okay, Roe has happened. What, What can we do? For, our, for the women at our company, right? Mm-hmm. We can't change the laws in the world, but what can we do for our folks? Well, what we can do is that if you need um, a reproductive health benefit that you can't get in your state, we're going to pay for your travel so that you can get that benefit and still be able, and we're going to look out for you. We're going to we're going to look out for you. Right. You're seeing companies now say, wait a minute, black folks have, you know, 
30 plus percent more student loan debt than their non-Hispanic white counterparts. It takes them a decade longer to pay it off. Okay, we can't do anything about whether or not the government is going to um, is going to write off student loan debt. But for our folks, we're going to create a student loan debt relief program for our people when you come work here, right? Or we're going to bring in the budgetista to talk to our employee resource groups about how to actively pay off student loan debt Mm -hmm. or how to use company benefits to do those things and do those things effectively. And so if you're an, if you're a prospective employee, the first thing you got to do when I talk about um, researching companies is in those interview processes, ask, you know, can you give me an idea of what your black employee resource group does? Or can you give me a, an idea of what your pride employee resource does? If it's, if it's just parties and potlucks, that might not be what you need, right? Mm-hmm. You might need something bigger than parties and potlucks. And shout out to the parties and the potlucks because they breed culture. But mm-hmm. you also have to think about how does this benefit me, right? Do Are there people in leadership who look like me? I've always said that if the senior most person in your organization of color in your organization is the DNI person, then you probably have a DNI problem, right? Mm-hmm. So you need to look across and see are there people who are who are in management and leadership who look like me? Talk to somebody who else used to work there or who works there currently. What is your experience like? We have to do peer-to-peer mentorship and peer-to-peer information sharing as people of color primarily, much more so than any other group, because our experience is so differentiated when it comes to, to when it comes to being at work. I say the same thing with um, with people who are uh, part of the queer community and the LGBTQ plus community is that the questions that we have to ask are different, right? Mm-hmm. And what is your commitment to diversity and inclusion? You can ask that question. Are there any other people of color who are going to be on my team? You can ask that question. If those questions Amen. make the people that you're talking to at work uncomfortable, it may be an uncomfortable environment for you yeah. once you get there, right? Like lean into the discomfort in the beginning so that you won't have to sit there and be uncomfortable for the next 18 months while you're looking for a new job. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. And what you said about confidence, we have to be confident enough to ask for that. And also shout out to the employees who are asking their leaders right now, the tough questions about what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be rolling out any benefits, you know, similar to XYZ companies um, to offer that, like you said, the reproductive care or um, yeah, healthcare benefits in other states and like paying for travel to get access to those benefits. You can do that. Yes. You can act right. You can raise a hand. You can submit a question. You can email the CEO. Uh, they got emails too. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I love flag. that. You can raise your hand and say, hey, yeah. company leadership or hey, head of equity and inclusion or hey, um, senior person in this organization. I don't feel comfortable as a queer person for us to have this, to take our company and our money and to this event in this state that is one of the states that has the more than 240 pieces of anti-gay legislation in it. Mm-hmm. Can we have that conversation, right? Employees much like consumers have more voice and more choice than they've ever had before. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of it is around being able to say, I think that we've been conditioned to just stay in the pocket. Don't ask to, and don't ask any Mm -hmm. questions. Don't, don't do this. Like just be happy to be here. And, and that's it. And I think that that particularly for younger professionals, that's not good enough anymore. Um, It is perfectly okay to say, this is good, but I think we can do better. Yeah, That is okay to say in this world that this is good, but I think that we can do better. That's for your career as well as for just how you move through the companies and the spaces where you're, where you're working. Yeah. And I love the, the power of choice that you said, like it's still very much as I agree, a job seekers market. And For our listeners who are largely women of color, um, but for people from the queer community too, like yourself and black men, um, if you are not feeling safe where you are, I think the power of this moment is that you are able to find a new opportunity and you can, there are places that exist where a Drew McCaskill can be, you know, an executive and a budget Nista can be 
getting these checks for all the monies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> those places do exist. Maybe they're harder to find, but yeah. they are out there. You know, and, and even if they're small businesses, people. you know, like we just like we'll have a, a press release coming out soon. Um, I I was like I'm committed to providing um, health care to because my my team is largely women. Um, if you've been denied um, in your state, you know, and, and that comes up for you, and so we've committed. We set aside a thousand dollars to help with travel. I'm um, in accommodations, and so um, all of our employees have access to that. If you are in a state that does not provide you with um, a safe mechanism for um, not being pregnant anymore, if that's what you so desire. So we're like, okay, you know, and if you're in that state and you've decided to terminate a pregnancy and you're not able to, well, we will give you money to be able to safely come to a place where you can do so. And so like, so don't think like you're listening, you're like, oh, that's all, it's, you know, it's only these big companies. It's like, no, small companies can commit. I, you know, I, I asked my CFO, I said, how much, if everybody said yes, you know, just in case, like how much can we commit? Because I don't want to say, yes, it's $10,000. And everybody says me. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> so, you know, so like she looked at our budget. It was like, she's like, if everybody said yes, we could comfortably do $1,000 per person. I said, okay, let's do it. And then next year, you know, as business does better, we can commit to more. So just know that, you know, the, the same goes through, tr- the same is true for small businesses as it is for large companies to potentially be. And oftentimes at small businesses, Tiffany, like uh, things are way more negotiable at small mm-hmm. businesses sometimes than they are at larger corporations, yeah. right? Um, so oftentimes I, I, I say this all the time is that we have not because we ask not. Mm-hmm. We have been conditioned to have this theory of lack where as many of us are walking around in the face of abundance and we have, and our eye is not trained to see it, right? And so what I say to people all the time is do not let these jobs steal your edges, your hairline <laughs> if you're men, steal your joy, right? Like Because There is a place out there where you can go to work, be your authentic self, and thrive. You do not have to just stay somewhere and just try and survive. And survival is not optimal. You, We want you to thrive, right? And there are places out there where you can do. You may have to jump out of that. You may have to jump out of that boat, right? Um, And and, and try something that you've never tried before or get into a space into a place where you say, I'm going to take control of my career and I'm going to use all of the tools in my tool belt to do that. But work is supposed to give you wings, not shackles. Mm. The reason why I go so hard around talking to people about their power and their choice and their voice is because work is supposed to give you wings and not shackles right? Mm -hmm. Money is supposed to give you wings and not shackles. That is, that's the biggest piece of this, right? And so the reality is that I don't want, we've got to speak abundance into the lives of other people because I can tell you that at my grown age, many of my peers, and I'm in my forties, Many of my peers have never had anybody speak abundance over their lives professionally. They've told them about lack. Mm -hmm. They've told them about limitations. They told them about, well, these are the rules. You got to follow this right here. And this is what you got to do and keep your head down. No, you deserve better than that. You're better and bigger than a job, right? Mm -hmm. And so most of what what freedom looks like for many of us who are working and and we're all working in some way, shape or form is figuring out what your mission is, right? Like what do you, what problems do you want to solve in the world? What's your superpower? How do you use it? And what's that, what, what's it in service to? And that sounds lofty, but it makes all of your decisions so much easier about work and your jobs. And I say that plural because Previous generations where there was this this thing that people just told you, get that good job and don't do anything to make them white folks mad at you, right? <laughs> yes. And that is the wrong way to think about any of this, right? Is your superpowers can, you can have three or four jobs if you lean into your mission and your superpower. If you lean into just, I got to do everything I can to keep this one job. Managers will come and managers will go. Jobs will come and jobs will go. Mm -hmm. 
most of the jobs that that half of us have, especially in our 20s and our 30s, are vehicles and not destinations. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't need, there are plenty of folks in jobs that they really don't need to just set up shop and stay at that job forever. That job is probably a vehicle and not a destination. And we've got to do a mindset shift around it because there is abundance around us. And that's up and down socioeconomic lines. That's all that's across the board as it relates to people who are first line and front line workers, as well as people who are in corporate environments. There's abundance out there. Please pass the plate because I'm ready to put some money in it. Like I, I feel like I've just been to a career sermon. My heart is so warm because I agree with like, and that's what I preach all the time is professional yes. resilience, not job stability and job security. So yes. oh, I feel like that's so exciting. I mean, it's great to hear. It's great to hear um, that from your perspective because there's people that I think even I can't reach and to have like there's there's people who will hear your voice and listen and I hope that they hear that. Um, true. true. Incredible. For sure. Well, I guess, I mean, to wrap up, I think, I, mm, I don't know. I feel like Judah said all things. Um, to wrap up, maybe if you can leave like, you know, our listeners with one piece of advice. I feel like, Someone took part, like one of my friends, Lovey, she had posted on Insta and she said, God, if it's the last days, just say it's the last days, you know? like <laughs> So sometimes it feels like that, whether it's your career, your business, or I feel like the, it always feels like the sky is falling down. If you could just give a piece of advice to our listeners, you know, whether they own a business, whether they are in their careers, like, you know, as they move forward, because to your point, there's a lot of people who have not had abundance spoken over them. Like one last piece of advice to that you know, to give them that little boost, you know, as they, as we navigate, you know, what is likely going to be um, a recession or whatever else is coming up, you know? Yeah. Um, the last thing I would say is um, what I've learned as a black gay man in corporate America is that nobody's coming to save you. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and there's a freedom that comes from that. It sounds pessimistic, but mm -hmm. there's a freedom in, that comes from saying that nobody is coming to save you. Mm -hmm. And what I, what, why I think that that's so important to know is that, but there are things that you, that you can do as it relates to um, building, building your career and building the professional life that you want. Mm -hmm. And the first thing is find your flock. Mm -hmm. We have this, we've been taught that like there's going to, that you can get this mentor or a sponsor and somebody in an ivory tower somewhere is going to come down and anoint you with the knowledge that you need to take the same career path that they took mm -hmm. when they were your age, 15, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and the world was totally different. Find what I would say is get, find your people, Right. Find a community and network the hell out of it. I My group chat has saved my life so many times. And we as people of color, I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of ego and shame tied up around talking about money and talking about compensation. We got to disavow ourselves of that notion. Find people that you can have real conversations with and you can information share and that you can talk to about. And you can say, did they give me all of the interns from Howard because I'm black? Or you can say, wait a minute, I don't know how to I don't know how to negotiate for equity. Like, tell me the SK SKUs again. Like, what, what should I be asking for? Is Am I asking for enough? All of those things matter. Peer to peer mentorship will save your life as a person of color. Mm -hmm. You just got to find the right people who are willing to share information with and you share information back with them. Your network, that information that comes from your network is amazing. Glean into it. Don't let the old rules about not talking about money or I don't want you to know how much money I make or I don't know what, I don't want you what, my, what my offer was. Let that go. Mm -hmm. It's not a competition. Community will save you. The other thing that I would say, too, is um, always be in the market. Always be in the market. You know, when you are comfortable, that's the best time to still be looking around to see what your other options and your other opportunities are. Right. That's when you have the most power to shift and to change, because I will tell you that God will make you so uncomfortable in comfortable situations that you can't help but move and get out of that situation so you can go and be who he called you to be. Mm -hmm. And I know that to be a fact. I've lived that myself. And so 
I would say always be in the market, always be understanding what you figuring out what your value is in the market. And the last thing I'll say is the last thing that the ref says to the two fighters in the ring before they ring that bell is protect yourself at all times. Mm. And I say that to women. I say that to queer people. I say that to people of color. Protect yourself at all times, meaning protect your peace, mm -hmm. protect your integrity, protect you know your the the integrity of your work and your work quality, um, and don't let these jobs break you. Don't let them break your spirit. Don't let the markets break you. Don't let the things that are going on in the zeitgeist break you. I, I said this to um, like about a year ago. Um, I said, white America discovered that racism is real and that Juneteenth exists, right? And what I said to my, what I said to my black friends and colleagues all the time is like, you do know that if somebody walks up to you and, and, and asks you to explain racism and the history of racism and all of that to them at that particular moment, you don't have to get involved in that, right? Like, there's all of these things that I say about protecting your peace, whether mm -hmm. it's at work or in any other place. And that's also like taking a break when you need it, asking for help when you need it. Mm -hmm. Like don't, you know, we did a survey around um, queer professionals and like 56% of them said that all of the anti-gay legislation and the stuff that was happening in government, right? The stuff that was happening around them was giving them was causing them to have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. That's over half, right? And so we don't have the luxury of not of, of being able to turn off the world just because we got to get up and go to work at nine o'clock tomorrow, right? We don't have that luxury. I still am a black man when I get up and go to work and do all those things. And when I'm driving to work, you know, I also have in the back of my head that one in one thousand black men will be killed by law enforcement in this country. Mm -hmm. Right. I still have to go to work and, and do all the things. And so what I say is like protect yourself at all times, meaning like give yourself space for peace, okay. whatever that means. Even if that means looking for a new gig, even if that means taking some time off, even if that means saying, you know, I'm excited that you want to have that conversation. I wish more people outside of the black community were interested in learning. I applaud you in doing that. I'm just not the right person to help you with it. Okay. That's you know great. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Find your flock, always be in the market, and protect, protect yourself, yourself at all times. Thank you so much, Drew. That was awesome. Drew McCaskill, thank you so much for joining Brown Ambition. I feel like I can listen to you talk all day. <laughs> uh, but when, if you guys want to find out more about Drew, please go follow him immediately on LinkedIn right now. We'll post a link to his profile in the show notes. Drew, thank you so much for joining BA. Yeah. Thank Where else can so they much find you? Are you on the are you on the um the the Instagrams? I am on the Twitters. You can find okay. me at Drew McCaskill on Twitter. <laughs> um, I talk about career stuff as well as my favorite TV shows and politics. So be if you're gonna follow me, just be ready because it's not all about it's not all professional Drew. So just know that. <laughs> um, and um, my uh, my professional Insta is at Drew McCaskill. You can follow me there, but okay. it's all work stuff. <clears throat> okay, awesome. Thank you, Drew. All right. Thank you, Drew. All right. Part of the Thank BA fam. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, 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 BA fam. We're on YouTube. Woohoo. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, why don't you go over to that little bell icon and just tap that for us. Show the BA fam how much you love us. And that way you'll also get notifications when new videos drop. Also, share the channel with a friend. We're always like, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. And thank y'all so much again for all the support.